Hi, everybody. Liza Daniel here, Brant Daniel's wife. You might know him as the uh, two scoops of the Aryan Brotherhood. Well, let me tell you, my husband, Brant Daniel, first of all, he's a really nice guy. He's got a good heart and a good soul and a good spirit. And uh, what's happening to him in the press and in the courts is an abomination and a gross act of injustice. Well, no one can tell you better than himself. So here he is, my husband, Brant Daniel, unfiltered, direct to you. The judge filed an order for us to have an a evidentiary hearing based on the fact that they can overhear my legal calls. And she, she didn't have, she didn't push forward the order uh, against the CDC on opening my legal mail five times uh, illegally in the mail room. And that was the biggest one, you know. Uh, she issues the order 20 months ago. They violated continuously. I can't even get no legal mail. And then, you know, all, all the prosecution has is my alleged prison history. And that's their, that's their position that, that I don't get, I don't have a right to six amendments. I don't have a right to confidential communication or they, you know, they offer no evidence to oppose our position on the violations of my legal mail, listening to my visits, listening to my legal calls. It's really, uh, you know, it's an obstruction of justice, man. And then, and then, you know, uh, dealing with CDC on what I file, it's like I get retaliated on, my mail comes up missing. I got a couple letters from you the other night, and they were sent out in December, the first week of December. You know, six damn weeks. And then, get this, uh, you know, they benefit off our turmoils. IGI's agendas are being pushed by lanes and these idiots around these fucking prison yards. And it's fucking nuts. Well, that's why and I think, nuts. that's why, that's why I think it's really weird that they have this whole thing going on on YouTube and they're just playing games with like the whole Oh yeah, yeah, it's like that guy right there that YouTube trip that's being done by IGI IGI is giving that dude something to read and uh, he's nothing but a fucking free range chicken I just who, who huddles in the, he huddles in the corner from warmth and, and it's like that's the type of idiots they use to benefit off our turmoils and propagate their position, you know, and, and that's not the only one. You see, that's the problem. That one there, at least we know about. It's the ones we don't know about who walk around these yards acting like a tough guy. Huh. You know, that's the problem. They all want to meddle, meddle in somebody's business. They think they know what they're talking about because they sound good. They got rehearsed spills. They rehearse it while they look in themselves in the mirror and say, I'm not a lame. I'm not a lame. <laughs> That's funny. And, and, and get this. Get this thing. So this prison, CSD SAC, implemented these video visits on Sundays, right? Mm -hmm. And for, for, for 350 inmates, a total of 350 inmates in ad SAG, and their lockup units, ad sex or mm -hmm. whatever other ad sex they got going, they only have three slots. So three people can get a video visits on a Sunday out of 350. So they implement this video visitation option over COVID issues. And then they take it and cancel it over the same issues. They say, oh, COVID hit, COVID hit, Omicron, Omicron, and they cancel our video visits. And that's the same thing they gave it to us for. It's, it's, it's fucking mind-blowing how stupid these motherfuckers are, you know? It really is. And what's, what's even worse is, is the so-called fucking, I don't know, this prison society nowadays is went from a convict era to a fucking inmate. Uh, inmate oriented poltroon fucking free range chicken ass era and you know they, they feed off of it they use these dudes they whisper 
in their ear while they're under escort. They do all this stupid shit. They go around lying and they go around cheating and stealing. It's just no accountability, man. And, and you know, I, I don't know. It's just, I deserve a fair shot on my case. I can't even file a damn mitigation review on this death penalty. Because now, for the next 21 days, they said, at least for 21 days, in the most crucial time of my case, uh, uh, no legal visits again. They stopped our legal visits. And I can't review no evidence at all. I haven't been able to review no evidence because my attorneys won't send none due to the mailroom violations, the legal mail violations. And we know they're listening on my legal calls, man. So they're going to give me the death penalty, and I can't even file a damn mitigation review. And, and what kind of death penalty case in the federal system is it where a guy is doing a life sentence of CDC, he gets indicted, and the judge signs off on a habeas corpus to put him in the immediate uh, pretrial federal detainee? And then he's rehoused back in CDC on a contract with the feds under the federal marshal contract and and under the state conviction uh, status, not pretrial status. It's, it's absolutely insanity, man. And for that very reason... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. For that very reason, the conviction... Uh, the corrupt state prison convicted status versus the federal pretrial status by law that I am, I'm not getting nothing I'm supposed to get as a pretrial detainee. Um, I've been in solitary confinement for five years now, continuously, continuously. We got a break. We got a break. Hey, hey, baby girl, and this fucking dude. This dude Ross, all he does is harp on uh, all his prison. He got, and oh, that article that came out with it said, I have a 24 year egregious history in prison. Right. Uh, overrated 115s that they bogusly falsified on me. And that's what they're going to stand on in order to. To deny me my Sixth Amendment right, give me a fucking break, man. Before that, you were, you were in two or thirteen years. So, like, when were you busy? Fourteen. I was in. I was in there fourteen years, and, and it's like, you know, I know I, I ain't no. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not no fucking saint. I know that, but I ain't never hurt a woman, a child, or an elderly person. Well, it wasn't you your know? intention I, to hurt anybody when you got out either, was it? No, absolutely not. I was trying to program. I got shut up by IGI system, man. I ain't gonna lie. I wasn't in. I wasn't used to the culture shock. See, before when I went to the shoe back in the days, it was a like a honor and integrity type of issue. I mean, honor and integrity on these yards. Well, you all should have. Like, you all should have programmed out together. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, and it's like. You know, I wasn't prepared for the culture shock, and, it, and then I wasn't prepared, to, to, you know, to uh, to deal with it like that on that level. Then, you know, not have a couple of my friends around that I got time with up there in the bay that I can rely on, you know. But mm -hmm. it's just one of those things, man. And it, it's ludicrous and preposterous to think that uh, that I don't deserve my constitutional rights over some bogus pumped up history of my prison record. And that's what these dudes are standing on on this federal case. That's insane. Right, right. And, and you see, that's what these DAs rely on is for the judge to tilt the hand of justice in their favor. Well, that sounds criminal. You know, that doesn't sound like justice. That sounds like... Hey, it, it, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this, and I want you to tell the people. Oh, well, all they got to do is look at that district attorney on that Rittenhouse case when he did his opening statement. The first three minutes when he told that jury, he told that jury, Rittenhouse chased down the victims. 
and shot him in the back. He chased him down and shot him in the back. That fucking dude, flat out lied in court, under oath to a jury, and there was no no repercussions. He didn't lose his license, nothing. He blatantly lied on this kid's life. And all the videos showed him being chased down and then he shot as self-defense. He didn't chase not one motherfucker down and shoot him in the back like that district attorney, uh, that district attorney said in his opening statement. See, that right there, that lie right there is the problem with the system, period. Period. And like, if that was me lying, I'd be in trouble. My shit would be on, uh, ABC World News. This motherfucker lied. They, they do Thomas Binger in the DA. He lied. He don't even get, uh, he don't even lose his law license. Absolutely nothing. Insane. And, and, and that's what's going on in my case. So, when we filed our motion for reconsideration for transfer, the, the prosecutor said, oh, so here's the thing. This prison took a, a legal visit day uh, from us to implement Friday uh, family visitations, right? Mm -hmm. So we used that in the court, and we told the judge, hey, man, you know, they took a day of uh, visit, so now we're down to one day a week that's preset. It's a preset visit day. If we're lucky, if we're lucky, we can get in. And if we're not lucky, we got to wait 14. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So if we're not lucky, we got to wait 14 days. Like in the county jail, I can get one tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, whenever. Whenever, uh, at all reasonable hours. Here, it's like a preset thing because it's a state prison. It's not a pretrial detention. So, so we said, we told her the truth. We told her they took Friday legal visits. And they put Friday uh, family visits now. They changed it to family visits. This fucking dude, Ross Pearson, gets in there and he flat out says, oh, they added the day, not subtracted the day of legal visits. I mean, blatantly lied. Blatantly wow. lied. And I'm, I'm pressing now. Now we're going to press for a contempt of most of a contempt of court. Because not only are, are they lying, they violated my legal bill five times. Five times. That's her order. Her order said for my legal mail to be open in front of me. Not not in the office. Not uh, in the mail room. Not in the shower. In front of me. And five times it wasn't open in front of me. It was open in the mail room. And then they stamped it. They stamped it open in the mail room by air. In air. You don't, oh, yeah, that shit ain't gonna happen five times in a row, you lying motherfucker. Hey, so then, they, they, uh, so then, you know, my first medallion trip that came up missing, they granted my shit show two on it, but yeah, I'm never gonna see the money. They, you have 60 seconds remaining. They tell me good luck getting paid on my money for that 602. They knew I was gonna use that 602 in my transfer motion. So I wrote you a letter about that. You can call up here and make a bitch by it. Tell them you want your money back because that's your money. Right. All right. Are you done recording? If you want me to be, yeah. Uh...